We do know uh, that there were thousands of horses killed here. The experts are sure that the, the vultures would have been drawn in, you know, by the thousands, great numbers, be attracted to uh, all these dead animals. Uh, the historians tell me that uh, it was not being attracted to the bodies of the dead soldiers because uh, uh, both sides picked up their dead here. If there were thousands of horses that were killed here, in 1863 there was not modern equipment to, to dispose of those. So they would have probably just pulled them off and away from their homes and into the back parts of the farms and the fields and just left them there to decay. And uh, what we know about vultures is that uh, they could not have resisted that offering and that they would have come here from all over the eastern United States, probably by the thousands. I think there's a good chance that that population increased from the battle and there's probably direct descendants here now from those birds that fed here in 1863. Those are black vultures we're watching up in that snag. They're the smaller of the two species of vultures here at the Gettysburg National Park. The other species are the turkey vulture, which I'm sure we'll be seeing. The sun has come out for the first time in two days. We've been deluged with rain down here, and uh, the vultures are finally getting out and enjoying the warmth of the sunshine. You're able to see that one is spreading his wings out and collecting the solar rays. In addition to drying his feathers, he's also uh, stoking up his uh, internal temperature a little bit. They're a fairly primitive bird uh, because of their eating habits where they may have to go for long periods of time without eating. Their uh, metabolism is very slow to enable them to do that. They burn off their fat very slowly. Uh, the trade-off to that is they need a long time to warm up and they need some external heat and they're making full use of the sunshine that they're getting right now. In many people's minds, the vulture will never win any beauty prizes. They're uh, a hard bird to love, but in the work that I've done with them and in the times, the years that I've been watching them, I get a lot of enjoyment out of the bird and certainly in the ecological scheme of things, they serve a valuable purpose. They are nature's sanitation engineers and they scavenge upon dead animals of all sizes and uh, help to keep the area clean and help to uh, reduce the transmission of disease organisms, which uh, a pile of dead animals laying around might, uh, might have a tendency to cause. The birds probably concentrated or came here by the thousands in 1863 because of the, of the food. But when they came here by the thousands, many of them would have found all these other conditions that were perfect for what they needed. It appears that a, a, a good wintering roost for birds has to contain some evergreens. The wind currents have to be just in the right direction and favorable for liftoff in the morning. There has to be some drafts going in the right way. They need... Uh, a combination of vegetation, one what's called a staging area, a place that they spend their days or their early evenings or their mornings adjacent to their roost. And there has to be an ample food supply within a certain distance. Those are all black vultures. They're feeding on a calf that was born dead yesterday morning. And they worked on it most of yesterday afternoon until dark. They weren't able to make much headway, even in a newborn calf. The hide is still so tough that they can't tear it with their talons. You see, last night that a red fox had found it and had eaten a large portion of the hindquarter and opened up a large area of the, of the hindquarter, and they're really keying in on that right now. Vultures normally feed only on dead animals. The black vulture will occasionally 
attack an animal that's not dead. I have seen here on this farm, uh, I've seen them mob a newly born lamb and separate it from the ewe and uh, literally eat it alive. Occasions are fairly rare, but uh, the name of the game is survival and they have to do whatever they can to ensure that they make it through to the nesting and breeding season to perpetuate the species. We're managing a total resource, and uh, we don't make value judgments that this part of the resource is good and that part is bad. We manage the whole, the whole thing. Uh, even though this is a uh, a historic area and is managed primarily for its historic values. We still deal with and protect all of the natural resources that are found here because they are part of that historic resource too. We don't separate them out and get rid of them because they might be a nuisance or they might, you know, create some problem for us. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.